Okay, welcome back everybody to this lecture. I've just uh, started the recording. We are now in Romans the 16th chapter. Any questions, any thoughts or any comments so far? Any? Are we all together? We are understanding things. Okay. All right, so let's get into chapter 16. It's like we said, it's the conclusion. Uh, Paul just takes some time to uh, greet and thank and uh, mention several people. And uh, then he makes a few final exhortations. And uh, then the uh, he closes the um, chapter. Uh, Kieran, uh, you want Romans 15 and verse 20. Uh, Romans 15, 20, yeah. So, uh, you know, Paul, uh, uh, Romans 15, 20 uh, is the verse Kieran wants to just uh, explain. So Paul, uh, you know, in those days, especially in Paul's time, See, the gospel just began to be proclaimed out of Jerusalem, right? The church began in Jerusalem. And then from there, the gospel was, people were going out, proclaiming the gospel. And uh, so Paul the apostle was one of the pioneers, um, uh, was uh, one of those people who, along with his team, of course, in, you know, in his first missionary journey, he went with Barnabas. Uh, second missionary journey, he was there with... Um, Silas, and then he had a team. Luke joined him. Uh, there was Timothy and Titus and some other people, and eventually there were more and more people who were part of his team. But Paul really expanded the reach of the gospel. He went to places where the gospel had not been preached. So there were villages, towns, even cities that he, uh, along with his team, would go in and preach the gospel. So that's what he's referring to in verse 20, that I have made it my aim to preach the gospel where Christ was not mentioned, but Christ was not preached before. And, um, uh, and, and, and so he's not building on somebody else's foundation. That means somebody else has come and already done work and he's adding to it. He's not doing that. He's going and laying the foundation. So that's what he's referring to. Now, in today's world, uh, in one sense, the gospel has been preached far and wide, meaning, you know, there are churches and people in many, or I would say a majority of the cities and towns and villages, you'll already find that uh, there's a church or somebody has come in. Um, but nonetheless, there are still people who have not really heard uh, the, go <coughs> the gospel, right? Um, so in today's world, the gospel has reached many of the world's cities and towns and villages. There would be certain parts of the world where the gospel has never been proclaimed even once. But for most parts, it has been re it has reached, and there may be even a church or a ministry at work. But there are still people who haven't heard the gospel. Okay, but in Paul's case, things were very different. Paul's time, things were very different. The gospel had not never not even come to that village or not even come to that city. Yeah. You know, and I remember yeah, this was way back in 1992, I think. Uh, I went to Albania. So, you know, when Paul mentions Illyricum, Illyricum is uh, towards the northern part of Albania. And so I remember going to Albania and those days, uh, Albania was somewhat like North Korea, meaning it was completely cut off from the rest of the world. And uh, at that time, uh, Albania had just opened up for the first time to outsiders. For, for, for a long time, that country was a closed country. They had a emperor, Hoja was his name. And uh, he had completely cut the country off from the rest of the world. And he had tried to completely eliminate religion. 
Now, Mother, Mother Teresa was from Albania. That was where she was born. And I remember when I, when I visited that, gone to Albania, they still had that place where this is where she was born and so on. But anyway, uh, uh, for, 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 for quite a few decades, Albania was cut off from the rest of the world. And then in, in early, early, early 90s, uh, uh, you know, the emperor was overthrown and, and Albania was opened up suddenly to outside world. People started coming in. And uh, so we went many to preach the gospel. And uh, and uh, I remember going out into certain villages out in those parts in Albania where they had no idea. They'd never seen a Bible. They didn't know what Christmas was. You know, and it was during Christmas time, 1992, I think. And, uh, you know, the whole world was celebrating Christmas, but these people had no idea what Christmas was. And they had no, never heard, you know, because, because the country was so closed, they had, they didn't know who Jesus was. They, nothing. And they, they had that, like, you know, at least in those, in the towns, yeah, the gospel had come in because people had come in to bring the gospel. But this was out in the village. And, um, you know, it was, yeah, uh, it was very, very different. Um, they had no context of Christianity. But but now, I'm sure by now, you know, the gospel has penetrated throughout the country. So that's what Paul was talking about, you know, taking the gospel to where you know, people had not heard. And anyway, let's get into chapter 16. Uh, I hope that answered your question, Kiran. I, I went off on a little story there. Anyway. Uh, Romans, the 16th chapter. Um, let's uh, read uh, verses 1 through 16. Romans, chapter 16, 1 through 16. Paul's greetings. He greets a lot of people. Now, uh, if you find the names difficult to read, you can just skip the names and just read the, read, you know, read the rest. Who wants to read for us? Um, 1 to, Pastor? Yes, go ahead. 1 to 16, please. I commend to you, Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant of the Church of St. Priya, that you may receive her in the Lord, in a manner worthy of the saints, and assist her in whatever business she has need of you. For indeed, she, was, she has been a helper of many and of myself also. Great Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their own necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Greet my beloved Ipa, Ipanetus, who is the first fruits of Achaia to Christ. Greet Mary, who labored much for us. Greet Andronicus and Zuniah, my countrymen and my fellow prisoners, who also who are of not um, not among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Greet Amphilius, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and Stan Statue. Thank you. Um, approved in Christ, greet those who are of the household of um, Aristobulus, greet Herodion, my countrymen, greet those who are of the household of Narcissus, who are in the Lord, greet Tryphena and Tryposa, who have labored in the Lord, greet the beloved Persis, who labored much in the Lord, greet Rufus, also chosen in the Lord and his mother and mine. Greet Assign Citrus, Plagon, Hermas, uh, Petrobos, Hermes, and the brethren who are with them. Greet Philologos and Julia, ne Nereus and his sister, and Olympus and the saints who are with them. 
Greet one another with a holy kiss. The Church of Christ greet you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, David, I think you did a good job with all the names. Um, yeah, it's not easy. Uh, we're not sure ourselves how to uh, pronounce these names, but thank you. You did a good job. So let's just uh, highlight a few things. Now, of course, you know, when you read this passage, uh, what was very uh, touching or what uh, impresses us um, first um, is how Paul uh, honors, recognizes other people who have served, who have served either with him or who are serving the Lord, uh, you know, in different contexts. And that's that's a very, you know, uh, it's something we can also imitate, right? That is, we recognize, you know, we don't have to be uh, recognize others who are also called by God, who are also serving God. We don't have to be so focused on ourselves as though we are the only ones serving God. No, Paul recognizes so many people by name. Um, he, you know, even recognizes their family, their mother or sister, or brother, and, and and he greets all of them and he calls them as people uh, who are workers in God or fellow workers in Christ or fellow laborers in the Lord. You know, so it, it's a lot of honor and a lot of respect that you see Paul expressing towards uh, so many people whom he remembers by name. And that's 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 pretty notable uh, here in this in these verses that we've read. And the other thing is, um, you know, uh, verses one and two, um, he mentions by name Phoebe, uh, who's a sister, uh, I mean, who's a lady uh, from the church in uh, St. Crea. So, which was close to Corinth, uh, so it was probably the, a, a, a small town near Corinth, and there's a church there. So, uh, she is uh, responsible uh, for handling. Uh, uh, the, he uses the words the word servant there is deacon, or you know, we, today we would call her deaconess, and uh, she's just handling some of the business of the church you know so maybe some administrative things of the church and he's saying you know hey just uh, make sure that you assist her in whatever she has need of so she's probably helping the church in Corinth and then um, uh, she is uh, uh, over in Rome uh, doing certain things and uh, Paul commends her to the believers there and saying, hey, assist her in whatever way she needs help. Uh, he also remembers Priscilla and Aquila. You know, they worked with Paul. This is verse three. They worked with Paul in Corinth. And uh, and so he remembers them. He even remembers the sacrifice they made. He says that they risked their own necks for my life. So he's uh, very thankful, very grateful uh, for their lives. You know, so it teaches us a lot of things that, you know, we should appreciate, we should honor people who've served with us and sacrificed with us for the gospel. And and that's what we see coming out uh, in all of these verses. Uh, he recognizes them. Uh, the other thing that we can point out is uh, uh, in verse 7, he mentions Andronicus and Junia, so uh, who are... Uh, his countrymen, that means they are Jewish, uh, they are fellow prisoners, they suffered together with Paul, who are of note among the apostles. Um, so um, uh, now this is not like 100% certain, but uh, uh, the name Junia is, of course, a feminine name, so that re would refer to a lady. And in this is verse 7. Andronicus is a name of a man, Junia, the name of a lady. And he says they are of note among the apostles. So it's, you know, it's most likely that Junia was recognized as an apostle. Now, I'm not stating this conclusively. I'm stating it as a possibility, right? That uh, maybe here there's an indication that here was a woman apostle, right? Uh, Andronicus and Junia what of note among the apostles and who were in Christ before me. That means they were well-recognized apostles and uh, leaders in the church. 
so that's just a side note. Um, we uh, we also see uh, Paul. Uh, you know, the other other mention here is about churches uh, that meet in their house, and that's in verse five. Greet the church that is in their house. So um, it just indicates to us that in those days, you know, uh, churches met in homes, uh, which was convenient. Uh, they didn't have these you know, church buildings or facilities that we have today, but that's how they met and uh, so on. So, um, so those are things we can really you know, highlight from these verses. Uh, let's read the uh, remaining verses from verse 17 to 27, please. Could somebody read it? And once again, uh, you will you'll run into certain names and if you... Uh, can't pronounce it, it's okay, you can skip it. Could somebody read that? Verse 17 to 27, please. Go ahead. Greet one another with the holy kiss. The churches of Christ greet you. Now I urge you, brethren, note, note those who cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learn and avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly and by smooth words and flattering speech divide, deceive the hearts of the simple for your obedience has become known to all. Therefore, I am glad on your behalf, but I want you to wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace will curse, curse, uh, curse, Satan, curse Sat Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Timothy, my fellow workers, and Lucius, Jason, and Susie Futter, my countrymen, greet you. I, Thursday, who wrote this epi epistle, greet you in the Lord. Grace, my host, and the host of the whole church. Greet you, Ephesus, and treasure of the city. Greets you, and quarters a brother. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Uh, now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to all revelation of the majesty. Keep secret since the world began but now has but now has been made manifest and by the prophetic scriptures has been made known to all nations according to the commandments of the everlasting god for obedience to the faith uh, to god alone wise be Glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, in this concluding section of Romans 16, uh, you can see Paul's heart once again on desiring believers to live together in unity. As verse 17, he says, you know, uh, look out, watch out for those who are causing divisions and um, offenses, uh, which are contrary to what you've been taught. So he has taught them a lot of things and which are of course recorded for us in this episode as well. And um, uh, he says, you know, if there are people who are speaking things that are different from this and uh, they are causing division, separating people, and offenses. Offense is simply a stumbling block, causing people to stumble. He says, avoid them. Avoid people who are divisive 
and offensive. Right? Avoid them. Stay away from them. Don't partner with them. Don't go along with them. Uh, but just avoid them. And he says, because these people are just serving their own selfish interests. That's verse 18. You know, they're, they're there for their own belly. That means their own selfish interests. And um, they are not serving Jesus Christ. People who are offensive and divisive. And they're just deceiving the hearts of the simple. You know, people who are gullible, people who are just believing of everything they hear, they're simple, they get easily deceived. And it's such people that these divisive and offensive people take advantage of. But Paul is saying just avoid such people because you know it's important for the church, for the body of Christ, for believers to stay together. And so he says, be wise in what is good and be wise. Just so that be wise to know what is right. What are the things to pursue? And the things to avoid, just, just leave it in. Thing. So, uh, when it comes to, uh, that's verse 19, when it comes to things that are uh, uh, evil, you know, don't even get involved in it. Just be innocent and stay away from it. But when it comes to what is good, you know, be wise and know and understand and engage with things that are good. And, uh, and then as we do that, he says in verse 20, the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. That means you, are, as a church, as a people, are going to walk in dominion and experientially walk in dominion over Satan. God will you know, cause you to triumph over whatever Satan is doing. Um, and then, you know, uh, he, he greets a lot of people. And what is interesting is in verse um, 22, um, is um, 30 or so. Uh, so obviously, Paul must have been dictating the epistle, and this person, Tertius, must be must have been his scribe or his uh, writer, typing, writing out his uh, uh, epistle. Right? Um, yeah. So I, I see the question there. Verses 17 to 18. Uh, yeah, it's for believers, right? So he's saying brethren. Uh, so the question is, is, are verses 17 and 18 talking about believers? The answer is yes, believers. Note those who cause divisions, offenses. You know, um, so th there will be believers also who are offensive and divisive. Uh, so he's referring to people within and among the believers, right? So they are... Uh, they're not really serving Jesus, but they are serving their own interests. And so avoid them. Now, it can include even those from outside the church who will try to divide the church. The, so verse 17 and 18, I think, uh, uh, you know, what the church should be looking for is any, anything, anything, whether it's from within the church or from outside the church. Anything that is offensive and divisive. We should avoid, whether it's from believers or from uh, unbelievers. So there will be both. That uh, that uh, people from within the church and people from outside the church uh, who try to uh, cause divisions, um, and uh, we should avoid them. Okay. So going back to what I was mentioning there in verse twenty-two, yeah, Tertius is the person who was writing down this episode. Uh, verse 23 uh, is what gives us an indication that this episode was written from Corinth because Gaius, my host. So Gaius uh, is mentioned there in 1 Corinthians. And uh, 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 and and so it's, it's most like, it's likely that Gaius was um, the one who, um, uh, uh, is mentioned in First Corinthians one fourteen uh, is the same Gaius and and because he is mentioned uh, as a person living at Corinth, that's why we see here in Romans sixteen twenty three. Uh, okay, that's a clue that Paul was in Corinth when he was writing this episode. Uh, the other clue is Erastus, Erastus, uh, the treasurer of the city, 
Uh, he was like the financial officer of the city, managing the treasure of the city. And his name was found uh, in a stone uh, inscription in Corinth. So that's another clue that Erastus was a treasurer of the city. Uh, so that's why we, uh, uh, you know, Bible scholars are pretty confident that Paul wrote Romans, uh, the epistle to Rome, to the believers at Rome, from while he was in Corinth, uh, and and so that's that's uh, that's the clue there. And uh, in conclusion, uh, in verse twenty-five and twenty-six, you know, it's very very interesting to see how Paul says um, uh, he talks about according to my gospel, my gospel, meaning the gospel that Paul is preaching. You know, he refers to it as my gospel. That's what I am preaching, uh, the preaching of Jesus Christ. You know, that's that's Paul is really. This is the gospel I'm proclaiming. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And um, it is actually an unveiling of a secret that was hidden from the days. So, so the gospel was actually kept as a secret, but now it's been made, now it has been revealed. And that's the secret that Paul is preaching the gospel. And uh, uh, verse 26, it's, it's been made manifest uh, by the prophetic scriptures and it's been made known to all the nations. That means this message of Jesus Christ was kept hidden, but now it's visible. Everybody can know it. It was there in the prophetic scriptures. I mean, the scriptures had it, but it was hidden there. People didn't know it, but now it's been unveiled and we are proclaiming it to all the nations. So Paul concludes uh, with that. Right, so, um, so this is Romans, the Paul's epistle to Rome, um, and it's 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 a you know it's a a thorough a thorough well you know, a complete uh, teaching a doctrinal epistle, you know, starting from Romans one, where he starts with just a very you know, the, on the proof of God's existence, uh, the issue of sin. Uh, and then in chapter two, it talks about conscience. And um, chapter three, that uh, we have sinned and God has provided for our redemption through Jesus Christ. Chapter four, the importance of faith, that it is through faith we are reconciled to God. Chapter 5, uh, the difference that Jesus makes. In Adam we die, but in Christ we receive God's gift of righteousness. And so salvation is possible through Christ. Uh, 6, 7, and 8, how we overcome sin. That the cross, uh, you know, we are identified with Jesus in his death, burial, and resurrection. And therefore through the cross we overcome the power of sin. Romans 8, it's the Holy Spirit who enables us to walk in victory over sin, uh, crucify the flesh and walk in victory. And uh, as we walk in the Spirit, we overcome the flesh. And uh, no matter what we suffer in this world, the love of God will never fail us. Romans 9, 10, 11, um, a little uh, digression. He talks a little bit about God's work for the Jews and the church, what God is doing. Then 12 to early part of 15, uh, or chapter, chapter 14, early part of chapter 15 is how we should live as believers and relating to one another, relating to the government, relating to those who are weaker in the faith, and relating to those who might have different uh, views and opinions, deals with that. Then Romans 15 and 16 are some of his personal thoughts, conclusions, and uh, uh, and uh, a wonderful, um, you know, conclusion, just uh, honoring all the others who have been serving Jesus uh, during those days. So overall, a, a wonderful book, uh, this book of Romans. Uh, so now with this, we finish our journey through Romans, uh, what we are going to do, or what I am going to do, is give you 
the remaining two assignments. I've already put out one assignment uh, in classroom and also in the e-learning for those who are doing e-learning. Uh, so uh, the month of November, uh, we won't have class, but just use the time to do the assign assessments. I will take time to just prepare the assignments and release it. And uh, then you you can just take the time to do the assessment and um, that's it. Uh, you know, we complete uh, our course on Romans. Any questions, any comments, anybody wants to say anything? Uh, I see Kieran's comment, wonderful book, Romans. Yes, it's been a blessed time studying. Any questions, any comments before we close? Okay, so thank you everyone. Uh, for this opportunity to study the Book of Romans with you. It's been wonderful. Um, just keep an eye out for the two assessments that will be put on Google Classroom and uh, work, work, um, work, Workspace or in the e-learning portal. Just finish those assessments by the end of November and we are done with this course. Okay, so no classes in Romans from next week, right? Let's close in prayer. Uh, could somebody pray with us as a class and uh, thank God for this journey through Romans, the understanding and truth that we have learned and um, we will dismiss. Could somebody please pray? Father, we thank you. We praise you. We bless your holy name, Daddy. You are so good in our life. Thank you for the opportunity to study the book of Romans. Thank you, Daddy. We made righteous through faith by the grace of God. We thank you. Thank you for the wonderful revelations from, from Paul. Thank you for the life of Paul. Thank you for the scriptures, Daddy. We bless you, Daddy. Thank you, Dad. Let the scriptures will be manifest in our life. Let the righteousness of God will manifest in our life through faith in grace. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We bless you, Daddy. Thank you for the wonderful journey. Let this journey of grace will continue, Father, even though the suffering. Let me carry this truth and preach to many people and bring many people to the salvation. We thank you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank, thank you, you everyone. God bless you all. Thank you for being on this class. Uh, see you again. Thanks. Bye now. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.